Hey everybody, are you curious about or do you want to subdivide land in Prince Edward Island? This video is for you. This video is a result of a question I received via email from an off-island buyer named Carol. Carol is asking about a cottage that's on about an acre and a half of waterfront land if that land can be subdivided. This is an excellent question, so we're going to hit this head on in this video. Number one, I wanted to define some things and have a couple disclaimers. So, definition of restrictive and protective covenants I've covered in other videos. It's basically rules that are mutually agreed upon within a subdivision or community that spells out what you can and cannot do on that property. This could be, and not limited to, whether there's commercial activity, if you can rent it out, minimum square footage, uh, where you can put your structure, if you can put a well in, septic, if there's any common services, homeowners fees, grass cutting fees, maintenance fees, road maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. So restrictive covenants are quite common on any subdivisions that were probably developed after the 80s, 90s. They've been around forever, but today pretty well 100% of the new subdivisions will have a set of restrictive and protective covenants that will protect the value of your property. Many of these will preclude the use of mini homes, unfortunately. So those people looking to put a mini home on the land, on land are typically looking at something that's not within a subdivision or community unless that was explicitly developed for the purposes of planting mini homes on. So in this particular case, the 1.4 acres of waterfront land, the first thing I would probably do is run the property on uh, the IRAC site, irac.pe.ca. I would go to Lands Protection Act, go to the Lands Protection Database. I'd run the PID number and see if it's been identified for non-development. This is, of course, after I've already figured out there's no restrictive covenants. So this particular piece of land sort of did, but didn't look like it was in a subdivision. So after we run the PID number, the property ID number on the IRAC site, that will tell us if it's been identified. Again, I've made videos on this as well. Identification basically means that someone bought that property and then the provincial government identified it for non-development, non-subdivision within the next 10 years. So that person could apply to have that removed, but it'll probably take 10 years. In the case of this property, it's a cottage. So not only are you worried about putting a division in, but what about moving the structure? What about the well? Where's the septic? So now you have three or four other things to be concerned about as well. You just can't simply cut it into little chunks because you may find the chunk behind the cottage in this particular case probably has the septic field and the well's probably in front or vice versa. So in this particular case, it might be difficult to subdivide the property. Other things we look for when we're subdividing property is the fact that there is a 66 foot right of way. Some of the older roads were 40 feet or less. So typically you have to have a 66 foot right of way. And if you're going over five lots with the feeder street, your $30,000 project could turn into a million dollars because now you get into TPW or transportation public works standards. At the end of the day, there's basically three authorities you're gonna deal with. Number one is it always pays to hire a surveyor. The government maps are great, but they're not 100% correct. And before you start cutting down trees, or moving things around, you may want to make sure a surveyor surveys the property. If it has structures on it, get a plot plan done, which will show you where the structures are, electrical lines and so forth, driveways, easements. Uh, so a surveyor is a good person to have on your team, as well as somebody in property at Access PEI. The, there should be an Access PEI office that oversees that area that can talk to you about subdividing the property in addition to building permits and so forth. The third party that sometimes gets involved if there's streams, uh, there's rivers, waterfront, uh, riparian zones on the shore, uh, what else, springs, would be the environment. So the environment's typically contacted by Access PEI. If they get involved, they'll also put environmental buffers around things. That environmental buffer is usually 60 feet on either side. So if you have a stream, we have 120 feet you can't do anything with. So these are all things to consider at the end of the day. Talk to Access PEI, hook up with a good surveyor. Have a great day. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions about PEI real estate, 
PEI in general or real estate in general, put them in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up and press the little bell symbol beside the subscribe button.